right, here we are. So if you are in the chat, I will be checking the chat every so often. And uh, otherwise, uh, this will be unlike a lot of the videos that I typically do where I do a lot of uh, talking and whatnot. But I am going to try to like talk through kind of my process. And so let me let me just show you kind of how I've broken down my layers panel here. Um, I think that might be kind of interesting for people. Uh, but basically, um, I start with, um, well, I start with the inks. So here's the inks. Um, clean these up. I'm going to have a different video on the inks and, and how those are cleaned up. Um, but you can kind of see, and I'll just zoom in in different spots so you can see kind of what's going on there. Um, you know, if I take this away, you can see that they're transparent. I've deleted the white. Um, and so I've got a bunch of different characters and, uh, and we're going to be coloring them. Um, but because it's pretty complicated, um, I start with flats and this is what flats are. So flats are, um, if you take away the inks, um, I, I, I believe it's similar to what they used to call seps or color separations. Um, but basically you go in and you separate the colors. And so if we look at Dwight here, I've got the ink layer, right? But then I've got the color seps. And the cool thing about that is if I highlight this layer and I use my magic wand tool, then I can just grab just the skin. I can just grab the skin or I can just grab the red of his thing or whatever. Now, you'll notice that the flatter made a couple mistakes here. Um, Superman's hand isn't gloved. Um, and things like that. So what I actually do is I come in and I just come in and kind of adjust some things. And, uh, and I'm already seeing some things that I need to adjust a little bit further. And so what I'll do is I'll zoom in here like this. And I just take like a lasso tool and I'm just going to overlap the skin here like that. And then I'm going to use magic wand tool and hold alt. And I'll separate that part. And then I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to grab this and just fill that. Ah, but it's locked because I'm on the wrong layer, so just fill that like that. Okay, so you can kind of go in and make some adjustments. I'm going to grab this guy, and I'm going to come in and fill that spot in. Okay, and so I can continue to kind of do this. And this is, this is all in the one layer. And the reason I do this um, this way is because... And let, me, let me show you something that's really important with this. What's happening? There we go. Um, and let me see. Anna alias. Anna alias. All right. So the important thing here is that that these are not aliased. So I'm gonna I'm gonna intentionally mess this up, um, and I'll show you I'll show you something. So I'm just gonna grab this, and I'm just gonna fill these in. Um, so if I intentionally mess this up, I'm going to, I'm going to make an alias selection or an anti-alias selection like this. Okay. And then I'm going to take my magic wand or my, my paint bucket tool and I'm going to anti-alias this as well. And I'm just going to choose a color that's very different than what I'm doing here. And you'll notice, um, as I deselect this right around the edge here, this is bad news bears. This is not the same color as this. These are not the same color. And that's a huge problem because if I made another selection, you notice how it doesn't select these ones. It just selects the inside. That becomes a problem because then I can come in and press like Command U or Control U on a PC. And as I change this, it doesn't change those ones. And so when you're doing flats and colors um, to start out, the most important thing is to make sure that you have any alias off on all of the tools that you're using. So if I'm using a, you know, a brush or I'm using a magic wand or whatever, so I'm gonna take any alias off on my magic wand, I'm gonna take any alias off on my paint bucket, okay? And so all of those things are really important. Um, and if as I'm going, if anybody has any questions um, or comments or critiques, or ways that you do this better, I would love to hear them. 
uh, because I'm continually evolving this process. Um, but this is this is kind of what a flatted page would look like. This is what a flatted page would look like without any ink. So you just kind of see that I can grab all of these. Um, you know, with my magic wand tools, so I can just grab that section and I can change it, I can color it or whatever, right? And so I can grab this and grab this. If I take um, and put contiguous on, you'll notice that it grabbed uh, Gwen's uh, clothing as well as Baroness's hair. Um, if I take and I turn contiguous on, then it will only grab the stuff that's touching. See, it didn't even get her arm. It only grabs stuff that's touching. So those are just some things that I'm doing. Anyway, all right, so that's flats. I'll turn inks back on. I'm going to lock my color layer. I'm sure that I'll unlock it uh, a few times during that. Um, then I have highlights and shadows. So there's a couple different ways to do this. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. There's a couple ways that I do it. Um, sometimes I will have this just be these highlights and shadows. I'll just have them be a gray. Um, like a mid-tone gray scale. And here's here's how I set this up. I'm just going to... I like this color because I set it up before, so I'm just going to grab it. Um, but I'm just going to delete this. Down here, you have at the bottom of your layers panel, you got like a create a fill adjustment layer. You just create a solid color. And the cool thing about these adjustment layers is they are called non-destructive edits, and so they don't actually destroy anything. They, they just adjust things. And so I can come in here and I can do this all I want. And you're saying, well, why would I want to fill the whole thing? But if you go like this and we go, you know, some sort of mid-tone gray here. Okay. And then let's name this highlights. Then I can turn this to screen or overlay. And you can see that it kind of lightens it on these different blending modes. So if I turn this to screen and then I use this mask, I'm just going to invert this mask. Um, and I, and I color on this mask, uh, B, why, why can't I switch tools here, what's going on? There we go. Um, wherever I color white, it will draw in a highlight. And if I find that that's too bold of a highlight, I can do one of two things. I can adjust my opacity and kind of dial it in there, but then you can kind of just come in here and just do a quick thing. And, and let me let me show you why this is cool and why I, I like this way of doing it. Um, so I've got a gray, a blue, and a red, right? But I can take a brush and I can come in here like this and I can give myself a highlight on the cheek and the hat. And you'll notice that I get a light gray, a light blue. I'm just going to turn this up so you can see it. Okay, I get a light gray, a light blue, and a, and a light red with one layer and one shape. So... The cool thing about that is that I can come in here and it's and it's really quick. Same with the shadows. I can come in and just draw in, draw in shadows. But because I want to play with um, kind of light theory uh, a little bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, oop, I just found a spot that I need to fix in the colors. So I'm just going to go like this real quick. Grab that. No, be here. There we go. Okay, fix that. Lock that back down. Um, I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to I'm going to do my highlights as a warm color and my shadows as a cool color. And the nice thing about that is it'll give kind of the light a quality. And so I can come in here like this and it kind of warms things up a little bit like that and that cools things down on the other side. Okay? And so my shadow layer I usually have on multiply, my highlight layer I usually have on screen, and I'll turn these both down quite a bit um, to kind of let them mix a little bit in the opacity. And uh, that's a little high as well. So I'll just kind of crank that down. And then I can just come in and just kind of color things. And so that's mainly what I'll be doing today. The last thing that I like to do is I like to add a little hint of a tone. This is just a 10% color fill. And uh, if you look at the whole thing here, um, you can kind of see that it just kind of unifies the colors just a little bit. Uh, I've got it on overlay. If, you know, if I took this down to like a brown or something like that um, and cranked it up, you can kind of see, um, you know, or if I went like with a red um, or something like that. So you can see how it kind of blends everything together. Um, but I'll do that usually at the end and I'll turn it down quite a bit. Um, it just kind of ties the colors. It's as if you're mixing all the colors with, 
kind of from a specific color. But that's kind of the last step. Um, I'll call that like, I don't know, you know, main tone or something. Um, so anyway, so that's what I'm gonna be doing today is jumping in in the shadows and whatnot. So uh, I'm gonna grab my highlights here and start from scratch and my shadows here and start from scratch. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I gotta figure out where I wanna start. I'll just, I'll just start over here with spider Gwen. So I'm gonna say that my light source is coming from my upper right hand corner because that's how I inked it. And so I'm just gonna come in with some little spots of color and I can already tell that that's gonna to be too bright for her. She might, she might get her own layer here, we'll see. But she's just gonna get little bits kind of color to kind of highlight things. Um, another thing that I can do if I wanted is I can come in here and I can hit this and this and this with my magic wand tool. And this will ensure that I'm not accidentally coloring on the background, um, that I'm only coloring on the foreground. And the cool part about that, I'll show you that with the shadows, is I can come over here and I can color, but it only colors the inside of that selection. So that's kind of cool. I'm still not certain about if this is how I want to do my highlights and shadows, if I want to do them like this, um, or if I want to come in and just gray them out. But the cool thing is, ah, man, I really like that gray. Maybe I'll just mix it with a little bit of blue. Let's just mix it with a little bit of blue. That's a little bit better anyway. Um, the cool thing is I can just change that whenever I want. So that's kind of fun. So I'm curious, those of you that uh, those of you that do colors, um, do you do them like this? Do you have your own way of doing them? Where do you guys kind of end up as far as the the coloring scene goes? Ah, those aren't selected. Come back. Hold Shift to make sure I grab that. Go back to shadows. up a little bit. All right, so her torso would cast a shadow on that part of her arm. That's facing away from the light. So really just the light would just be hitting just right about there. This is all in shadow. This is all in shadow. This is facing away from the light. Kind of shape out her forearm here like this. This part of her hand is going to be facing away from the light. The cool thing is if, you, if you're doing this, you can hit um, just X. You notice that it just toggles back and forth. Um, and so I can just come in and just kind of toggle back and forth between um, X. And so that'll give me black and white. And since I'm working on a, on a mask, um, all I need to do to, I just need to push one button um, to get from different, um, so it'd be, it'd be very similar to doing like the light and shadow, um, with a brush and then a, an eraser tool. Okay. I'm going to knock that back a bit. So let's shape this out around there like that. And I'm going to come in later and uh, add some gradients after the fact, but I like starting with these solid lines because it really helps to define the form really well. So we'll start with this and then we'll come back in later and draw a highlight along this edge because that's facing the light. Maybe not right there, 
because that's kind of the inside of the leg. All right. And if stuff starts to look a little too shiny or whatever, you can kind of knock it back, but I usually do that in a different step. So I'm just getting like basic forms down here. And this can be a very time consuming process, as you guys can see here. Um, but I really like the way that it turns out when I do it this way. So it's worth it to me. see what happens when I play with these highlights. Let's uh, yellow them up a little bit. Green, blue. Green is kind of interesting. Yeah, I might, maybe red's the wrong choice. I might stick with the yellow. Let's, we'll see how that looks on everything else. Command D to deselect. Okay, so she's good. Um, I'm just gonna go in here and touch up the motorcycle a little bit. Um, light's coming from here, so I'm gonna add in some shiny bits. And I don't need too much here, but just kind of the suggestion of light and shadow is kind of all I'm looking for. Some parts of this to be darker than other parts. So, and the shadows really work nicely on grays because I've got them blued out. So I can knock a lot of this back without having to change any of the colors, which is nice. Uh, it might be a little too much. I'm gonna bring some of this back out. Yeah, there we go. And kind of get some of this action so we get some depth. This is gonna cast a bit of a shadow. Um, I actually ride a motorcycle, so I'm not a motorcycle mechanic. I don't know what all these things do, but I am familiar with what they look like. So, and I'm trying to decide whether I want to deal with the ground separately than everything else, and I think I will leave the ground for another, a different layer than this uh, main kind of character-based layer. And I do want to, because these are very similar colors, I do want to separate them. So I'm gonna blue out as much as I can around Cuphead, just to give him kind of a, kind of a halo situation going on. Um, without making it look like he's glowing or weird or whatever. Okay, so there's a little bit of depth to, um, there's a little bit of depth to the bike. We're gonna give him, this is the cool part, is I can just do one big kind of swooping line and then kind of round some of this out. And it just deals with all of the different things. Which is kind of nice. I don't like what it did to the tongue, so I'm just gonna erase the tongue here. And we'll just do the tongue kind of separately than everything else. The tongue is inside the mouth, so it would be kind of like that. The teeth are going to be white, but the behind the teeth, the behind the lips, I mean. All right, just some depth, which kind of looks a little weird on Cuphead, but that's okay. That is okay, because this is my interpretation of this character, so. We're gonna have some shadow on this side. And then we'll have some highlights. And that yellow does not show up on those grays. I might, I might still be searching for the right highlight color, but we'll see. It 
barely shows up on the yellow because it is yellow. That's all right. That's okay. So who do we have? Uh, I see that we've got some people here, but no one's kind of speaking up. Who, who do we have here that's watching? Where are you guys from? Jump back into the shadows here. It's a little high, so I'll hit X and carve into that. Tap that with a highlight. Tap that with a highlight. Get a little highlight up here as well. All right. Okay, so. That section's looking Pretty good. I think I got most of the things that I want. I don't I'll always come back to different parts and things, but um, let's kind of just move on from here. I'm going to deal with the rocks and everything a little bit later. So we're going to highlight a longer tail. And I can kind of fur this a little bit by having. I should probably just make my brush small. Oh, I love that I don't have to hold Alt anymore. It's so great. I'm going to press Command-Z. Should have been that way the whole time, but oh well. Yeah, let's make this bigger again. Okay. This. But mostly mostly shadows there. So she's facing away from the light. So we'll just put kind of all of these in shadows. And then I'm just gonna bend this a little bit each time I come around to the spot where she's gonna fold or whatnot. And then we'll have kind of a line out here as well. As that faces away from the light. Got some shadow under the chin to kind of define that chin area. I'm gonna deal with the face in a bit. The face takes a bit of thinking for me. This whole hand is underneath. We can just color that out like that. This mainly facing away. This is underneath, so it'll be kind of in shadow. These are I cast a shadow from the hand. This one's kind of underneath, so I'm just gonna shadow that out there. Run a little shadow along this edge as well. come in and add some highlights. Got kind of a burst here. Just 
gonna run a big kind of highlight up there, and a highlight along there. That might be too big. I'm gonna might have to look at my reference here to see kind of bone structure and whatnot. I'm not gonna do cheeks right now. We'll just do some of the easier stuff. Big highlight that rounds out as her leg folds. I'm just gonna round that out. Nice little scoop. I'll add a few more in here. And then all of this is in shadow. So I'm actually gonna grab, I'm gonna do some scribbling. So Let's go, I'm gonna grab the ground and then press Control shift i And so now I will have everything but the ground. And then I'll come back to shadows. Perfect. I'm just gonna come along. Everything there is gonna be in shadow. This is all going to be in shadow. And then we're going to have some shadow cast from the arm and the torso. This is not going to be as lit as the other thing. This is further away, so I'm going to knock that back as well. We're going to have all of this is going to have face and torso shadow on it. And this is all facing away. So let's just knock all that back. Add a little highlight back here. We're just going to kind of come in with some little wrinkle highlights. The edges of the fabric kind of catch some of that. And this knot is going to cast a big shadow. This is going to kind of fall and bend away. I don't like how that looks. So we'll do that again. Nope. Like this. And then fall like that this Might bring in a little bit of a sliver of light here okay looking good there let's kind of shadow up here at the top there's gonna be that little crease in the shoulder that happens inside the ear I'm going to come back and do the hair later, but I'm just going to give it some texture here. So we get some texture, and we get some highlights we kind of mixed in with that. Some little rim light of hair here as well. Cool. Some of that action. Alrighty then. Okay, that's looking good. Let's move on to, oh, I didn't shadow this part of the bike for some reason so let's go to shadows and i'm just going to draw some shadows in here like that so the nice thing about this is that i'm not changing colors and changing brushes a ton and so 
you can get stuff like this done relatively quickly. It's not quickly, but it's quicker than if I had to change colors constantly. Because that takes forever. shadow from his nose. Okay. All right, so they're, they're looking good. Let's move on to the skull up here. So give me some shadows. And we'll go under this hood. Top of the head. Now the cool thing is we're going to come back in here later, and I am going to um, add in some some heat, some warm colors from um, the fire, and so that would be kind of fun to do. Okay, here we go. So this part is all gonna be in shadow and I want it to be kinda rough and weird looking. Like the Max and Sam Keith draws him. Rough and weird looking. Get that shadow inside of the eye socket there like this. I'll just connect that all the way around. Funny as I'm drawing these teeth, I'm getting like flashbacks to the, the cartoon uh, on MTV. I don't know if any of you guys saw that, but it blew my mind as a kid. It was crazy good. Super weird. Didn't make any sense at all. Which is awesome. kind of scribble a little bit here because um, I am trying to mimic a little bit of uh, kind of the life and vitality that ends up in Magnolia and Keith work and so some of this action is just going to be really really fast I like doing kind of the edges of things to kind of help define them a little bit more And if you've got something like a fold or something, you can get your your tonal value difference without having to flat that part of it or select it even because you can just kind of draw it in. This whole section is going to be dark because it's facing away from the light. So I'm kind of come up here like this. And we'll have this in shadow. I don't even know what I meant by this line, so I'm just kind of when in doubt, black it out, right? are overlapping those so they're going to cast some shadows above and below and then we've got creases creases on folds always cast shadows carve into that a little bit
creases along these edges as well. This whole side is going to roll away from the light. So one one thing that I know I do <laughs> that maybe super annoying was actually really helpful for me is I kind of talk myself through this. Um, and so I have this kind of running conversation about um, why I'm putting lines in specific places. Um, and the nice thing about that is it kind of helps me kind of, if I'm articulating it, it uses like a different part of my brain, which kind of helps me decide what I should be doing um, with different things. Add just a few little highlights here and there, not too many to his coat. some shadow on his hand kind of further help separate those little whatever those are knobs built-in brass knuckles on his the right hand of doom okay and I just realized this my flatter misinterpreted what I was doing there. So I'm going to hide these and I'm going to click on my colors and I'm going to select with contiguous on this one and I'm going to get up my lasso tool and hold alt and I'm going to deselect this part of the hand because this is actually supposed to be that color. So now it is, I can turn everything back on and lock this back down and go back to shadows. There we go. That looks much better, much more like the character. Knock those back a bit. I'll have some shadows in here as well. Great. Great, great, great. Okay. All right, we gotta we gotta shadow this guy up a little bit. Colors select select. I'm just gonna work on uh, a bit at a time here. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna do big shadow all the way across here. You get a shadow, and then each little crease is gonna get a little line of shadow and each little edge on the top is going to get it cutting in a little bit. And then under the arm, we get some hand, we'll carry this on up here. I'm assume that that's going to be the head and there. The arm, the shell. Loopy loops here with the shell. Doo -doo -doo. So anything that overlaps casts a shadow. And I'm gonna come in with some highlights and kind of clean some of this action up. Yeah, it's really not showing up on that. I'll have to I'll have to fix that later. Okay, um, arms. Legs. And so we got right here. And then here. The knuckles. Facing away from the light. This is inside his fist. This is underneath that. And I'm just going to put most of this in shadow just to kind of 
I'll be blocked by the body mostly. Okay. Okay, fun times. Fun times, ladies and gentlemen. Good times, good times. All right. So I think I like where he's going. I'm going to add in a little bit on the shell here. I also just do it sometimes with a little bit of texture. Um, so I can kind of add in a few little thinner lines here just kind of texturize it and then in between the shells and down here and over here I forgot to do his legs don't worry I'll get to him I know you were all very concerned I didn't do his legs. Okay, either that is. This is going to bug me. Yep, the flats are off. They're coming here like this. All right, give me colors, unlock them. And why did I do that? Uh, what is going on? Turn that off. Turn that off. So it's still there. So, oh, I see. This is a 75% for now. I turned it to 100. Grab that and do that. Still off. Because it's 99. Go to 100. Piece of garbage. Good. Now you can go back to 75. There we go. Turn these back on. Lock this back down. And we're back to the races. Okay. So. Anyway. So that's kind of how I do that. It's kind of a laborious process. Um, but it really helps to kind of uh, define the shapes of everything. And so I like painting them in. There are much faster ways to do it with different styles. Um, and nothing's necessarily right or wrong, but this is the way that I like doing it. It's weird. So, anyway. I think I'm going to cut this short. I might go live again later tonight if anybody's interested in hanging out. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hit that little bell and it'll notify you when I go live on stuff like this. And uh, yeah, I don't see anybody in the chat asking any questions. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.